We're going to be meeting with a lot of service providers in a short amount of time. This should be very interesting. You have a very short time frame. Two and a half you, you, hours. Two and a half hours, and, and that's not a. It's not like you're doing a site visit to their place for a whole day. But our whole process has been abbreviated, right? We've been on an accelerated pace, and we we want to get everything we can out of those two and a half hours. We really wanted to keep their piece brief. So no more than an hour because we have their package. We really want to spend a lot of time on the Q and A's. So let them have an hour to give us an overview, and then we can ask questions, clarifications. You know, I see another hour of that, and then the last 30 minutes we reserve kind of okay. What are the next steps? The game plan is absolutely on target. Let them present and get a sense for what it's like to work with them. Yeah. Let them bring their process to life for you. Because now you're working with them. The suppliers need to be prepared tomorrow for the questions that we have. I mean, this is it. This is showtime. We've told them, right, as part of this process, to define the team that will be working with us and bring them with, with them if they can uh, during these sessions. So that will truly give us an appreciation for the people that would be on our actual account. Because at the end of the day, people make the account. At one point, we said this process is almost like speed dating. Uh, where, where we're, we're meeting all these suppliers very, very briefly, just for a very short period of time. And then we're making a second call, bringing you back in, and, and now we're going to go to the altar, uh, specifically based upon what we're doing here. I mean, it's, it's been hectic. But we've already gone through a down select process. We started with 50 organizations. We had some very you know, critical criteria that we evaluated those organizations against and took it down to seven companies. So we're down to seven organizations at this point and we're really dealing with a couple issues when it comes to these seven companies. How well do they provide the services on the criteria that you're looking for and how do their fees match up. I would suggest that you probably want to evaluate their capabilities and down select the three and compare the pricing at that point because oftentimes I've found that an organization that's a best of breed, they're a best of breed for a reason. They're not only good at what they do, they're efficient at what they do, and they're oftentimes a low price provider. So you're saying do the pricing assessment in the second pass, not the first pass? I wouldn't bring everybody in for a pricing assessment right on the front end. Uh, if you down select the three, then you start pushing the envelope with those three. Pushing the envelope on pricing and see where you can leverage it, and pushing the envelope on their service capability to make sure they have what it is they say they have and are going to deliver what you need. Well, gang, here's to a productive day tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Well, we'll see how it goes, huh? Okay. <laughs>
we build it, they will come. I'd like to know where they have been in recent times, where they have done something similar to this. Also, I think we would like to at least talk with somebody from their company. Okay, we wanted to get a solution in front of you. Given short notice, we thought this was the best approach to take, and maybe it wasn't the right approach. I was really expecting more from them. This is a strategic opportunity, and it's serious. So that we're really looking for the organization to align strategically with for the future, not just for today. And one hand to say, you have some great options to go out there and find all these people through all these methods I never even thought about. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other hand, I'm saying to myself, oh my God. <laughs> let, let me suggest this, is that what you're bringing to the table are all the options, that which is sense. very proactive and you're to be commended by doing <clears throat> that. And the idea is that Kodak team gets to make a decision Absolutely. around all these proactive options that you're putting out there. It's really quite right. enlightening. Right. <laughs> and one of the things that I talked to Betty about was using traditional and non-traditional methods. So I mean, I think these are good to understand, and then I think we have to take a step back after mm -hmm. and determine how it does fit into Same. our value yeah. structure. Because you're very strong in, in RPO, do you feel threatened by some companies such as contract labor companies that are now taking their footprint and getting into the RPO? We believe the more good providers there are in a market, the bigger that market will be for all of us. I thought that was a really good point. You mentioned that you would um, be open-minded to partnering with someone else? Yeah. Yeah, provided we have the same kind of values. Are you partnering with a contract labor company today? No. Hopefully in these sessions we'll get into the, okay, exactly, tell me exactly how are you going to do it for Kodak? What is your solution? What's the team look like? Some did that better than others. And then this toll-free number, you have like a call center. So it be something like 1-800-HIRE-KODAK. Exactly. We can place orders into the system. When you say orders, you mean requisitions? Yes, thank you. Excuse me. So they were kind of all over the place. Well, can you talk a little bit more about the approval process in that when uh, we identify a need to hire? Our hiring managers enter a rack, right? So they have to fill out the specifics of what are they looking for. Then it has to go through the approval process. So how would you handle that, uh, you know, once you get that call? Is there a best-in-class solution? on that approval process. I am not aware of a best in class. I also am concerned about some of the cons because with a contact center, service center, they don't necessarily know the specific area and understand the needs around a certain area or location. Kodak is going to have to determine would you want your ultimate supplier, your ultimate provider to just ad adopt your current process as is or, or transform it. What other geographic areas where you have one client that's geographically dispersed globally that you're performing those services for? We, we today do not have a full end-to-end -end client where we're dealing in every one of the markets. With resources like that, more decentralized or localized, if you will, mm -hmm. um, the apparent benefit in that scenario, how do you, how do you handle then the need for one client to have one focal point as far as a centralized team. The other concern that I have is that, you know, during implementation, um, especially in such an accelerated implementation, uh, compliance really tends to be the one that goes by the wayside. How would you align your team? What subject matter expert and, you know, that's going to be aligned with the compliance side of Kodak to make sure that works? What would you do specifically, not just to say, yes, it's important, we're going to note it down, where we acknowledge it, but is there a specific where you could go to? Just for the benefit of your team, I would like to compliment you on behalf of Kodak. When we met in New York, the organization was the last one of the two days that we were there. And our team, to say the least, was a little tired, but we were still very attentive. The organization came in alone, okay? The other organizations that we had met came in with casts of hundreds. It sort of was like David against Goliath. <laughs> and you impressed us Thank enough you. that we wanted to continue conversations with you. I'm not going to read you our definition of our company, 
It's not getting someone to accept an offer. That's the, the small picture. The big picture is, are we bringing in people who are more productive, that will drive greater sales and greater profits to the organization? That was great. What I really need to see from you, because these prices are just way, way too high and would not be acceptable whatsoever, I need to see a breakdown of what the markup is going to be for the individual category. I need to determine with the team what the cost of every part of the markup is. Just like I get a bill in a restaurant, I want to see what I paid for. There we go. Good. Okay. If I could just look at that for a moment. These slides like this, to be honest with you, they're really hard to read. Do you have offices here in Rochester? Yes. Yeah. Where, where specifically? Uh, Going back to the transition team, what resources would be consistent from today through implementation and ongoing support? Well... So I believe that's critical. Just the difference between success and failure. I really expected them to do an outstanding job and they were totally disappointing. Totally did not expect them to present the way that they did. I think it really hurt them. What struck me as most um, interesting today was um, how one presentation can be given and how seven or eight people uh, in that room could, could get, uh, could send seven or eight different things in that same presentation. Each of us, we probably could tell you we have a certain favorite or a certain way that we believe this should be done. But what really is going to make the decision here is not the emotion, but it's going to be the data. That was a really stressful day. I think it was a productive day, but uh, certainly took a lot of energy out of us. Well, this certainly was a little different than what I expected it to be. We're asking really good golfers to also play volleyball. Why would we do that? You didn't get the people who were doing this for you. And they, they haven't identified those people That's yet. Right. That's really a showstopper. It's a time eater. Based upon experience, maybe about $70,000. Oh, okay. There's a number. Thank you. The actual. They nailed them. They don't know where the offices are. They had to look them up. I don't know what we're paying for. How does price influence all of this? Thank you.